I was born in St Kilda, but I, I don't uh, have a birth certificate, so I'm not actually sure when or specifically where, but I, I know it was around 1966. My parents uh, left myself and my sister when we were just babies. I was about six months old, and uh, they just disappeared, left us with a, an old lady, and we had a, a, an early childhood where there was you know, a lot of violence, a lot of uncertainty. You know, I started to run off the rails. I got uh, caught up in... In, in a lot of things that I shouldn't have, alcohol, drugs, you know, uh, stealing cars, all that kind of stuff. That, that kind of lifestyle, as I said, it's predictable, but it also starts to escalate, and that's really what you do notice. I was around 17, and, and I remember so vividly standing at the end of a driveway, having this extraordinary feeling. For me, it was an epiphany. I had to make a decision. I knew that if I got in the car and left, I was choosing that life and all that it entailed. And I literally went inside, packed my bags, and I moved to Townsville, of all places, and started a new life. I had a job putting um, pontoons in on the Great Barrier Reef. And, uh, and one of these jobs, I, I, I got decompression sickness, really quite seriously. I, I had nitrogen bubbles in my brain, in my spine, pretty much throughout my body. But I survived it and, and managed to keep going. But, but it meant I couldn't dive again. The company I was working for was a, a big Japanese company and they offered to retrain me and they put me into sales and marketing. And uh, I found myself at a big trade show in Sydney, surrounded by people in suits. I was a commercial diver, you know, beards, earrings, hair, long hair, ponytails, whatever it was, but I wasn't a suit. And, uh, and as I sat in this trade show with the CEO of the company at the time, I, I was basically snarling at people going by, just really, just a bad attitude towards what was happening. And, when the event finished, he stormed off and I was walking around the streets of Sydney and I kind of realised that I'd really actually blown an incredible opportunity. So I ended up in a big department store getting fitted out for suits and goodness knows what else, ended up back in my hotel that night looking like a million dollars and, and committed to try and make the most of this opportunity. And, and the next morning I was downstairs in the foyer and the CEO walked by me three times and uh, he didn't recognise me. And finally, when he came up to me and said, I can't believe what you've done, he pulled out of his pocket the tickets and a letter saying that he was gonna sack me that morning. We went to the trade show, it was hugely successful, and I spent the next five years travelling the world as an international sales manager for this company. And in hindsight, what I realised was getting decompression sickness, whilst I thought it was the end, it was just this extraordinary beginning of uh, one of the greatest opportunities of my life. After a f a lot of travel with this company, I decided that uh, I wanted to start my own business. So I started a marketing company and I started to realise that a lot of my clients at the time really had similar kind of issues, they had similar problems and similar challenges. And I started to, to be offering the same kind of advice time and time again. And, and uh, one day I realised that I had, um, I had 50 of these fact sheets on the wall and I thought, maybe if I wrote another 50, I'd have 100 and I could actually put them together and maybe, maybe I got a book in there, 101 ways I could call it to market your business. What really surprised me were how many people said to me, you know, don't do it. Andrew, kind of, you know, don't set yourself up for the disappointment, you know, like really, you know, who are you to, to write a book? So I ignored the advice and I, and I wrote the book. It, uh, it sent it to a publisher and, and it got published really pretty easily. And that, uh, that book is what started my entire writing career. If I listened to the people telling me the things that I can't do, I would never have done it. Once you become you know, an author and reasonably successful at it, people want you to present and, and it's what led me into the presenting world. So I started uh, talking around uh, all over the planet really regardless of what life has dealt to you, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, the very ugly, uh, whatever crossroads you've been through, you have two choices. And, and the first one is that you can take all of that stuff on board and become a bitter person. And unfortunately, way too many people do. Or else you can learn from it, you can grow, you can, you, you can just get smarter about it, or ideally become a better person. And, uh, and that's gotta be a better alternative. Thank you.